As we draw closer to uh, what's widely known as one of the worst months historically in, for the stock market, which is September, uh, we're going to dive into a couple of the things that we're looking at and, and talk about a little bit of seasonality as well. So uh, stick with me as we dive into the details. My name is Brian Cannon and welcome to Markets in 5. <music> As always, I'll start out with an update on uh, the market and what we're seeing. Um, as of right now, uh, even though we're approaching kind of a part of the, the year that we've just got to be a little bit careful with, uh, seasonally, um, August has been kind of a ho-hum month. Uh, September is, uh, historically speaking, uh, on average, been the worst month of the year. So as we uh, you know, use that information and start to, to make some investment decisions, we do want to pay attention to kind of what we're seeing, where we are in the market. Uh, so the, the uh, S&P 500, you can see here that uh, there is definitely still a negative divergence that uh, I don't think has worked itself off yet. So we do anticipate some uh, some volatility coming up because generally speaking, when you have uh, you know momentum that's beginning to drop, but you have the S and P making all time uh, market highs, uh, that usually uh, is a recipe for for a drop at some point. So, but uh, you know again, without trying to you know get ahead of ourselves and try to to make a a judgment call, we definitely use the. Uh, the trend lines and in the technical analysis to to aid our decisions. So right now the the market is still technically very very much in line with where we need it to be. Trend lines are holding up. Uh, you know, moving averages are holding up. So uh, you know, again, we do have that divergence on the RSI and the MACD relative to the uh, the price of the. Uh, the index, but uh, all in all, that just serves as more of a warning sign for us at this point. So another sign that we look for, again, when making decisions uh, about the risk and how much we want to take is really looking at the, the performance of the high yield corporate bond market relative to uh, the S&P 500. And again, when you see this breakout, when you see um, you know high yield breakout relative to uh, the S&P 500, it's a pretty good sign to go ahead and start taking risk off the table. So when you look at it historically, uh, it's worked out pretty, uh, pretty consistently. So that's one thing that we're watching really closely here. So when we talk about seasonality, it's taking a look at how has uh, a particular investment or an index performed uh, you know, on average over the, over the past. And so with this tool, uh, we can take a look at uh, the S&P 500 over the last 20 years, and you can see that uh, as we're entering this month of, uh, of August, it really is kind of a ho-hum month. There's not a lot of uh, outperformance, there's not a lot of spizzazz, and there's also not a lot of um, disappointment on average. It's just a very kind of, in a sense, almost kind of a boring month. Uh, but, however, that kind of uh, oftentimes historically has been the calm before the storm, right? So September historically, if you look at the chart, is actually 58% of the time over the last 20 years has delivered a negative 0.4% return on average, and that's the S&P 500. Using that information would allow you then to begin to take profits off the table if they're starting to, to roll over, or if trend lines are breaking, or if moving averages aren't holding up, and all of the technical things that we look at. If everything's starting to roll over and it coincides with the, a very, very weak part of the year, uh, you know, then, then it makes sense to go ahead and take, uh, take risk off the table potentially. Now, if we take a look at the NASDAQ, for instance, uh, it's a little bit different. And, and um, so if you take this out again over the last 20 years on average, instead of delivering a 0.2% return in uh, August, uh, it, the NASDAQ on average over the last 20 years has delivered a 1% rate of return. And instead of delivering a negative 0.4% re uh, return in, in September, it's delivered a negative 1% or, or 0.1%, so 10 basis points basically. So it's held up a little bit better during this seasonal weakness. So that tells us in with the lows and in, in, in the pullback that we potentially might have in September and maybe even, even into October, we want to hunt and peck and find those opportunities that are poised to do very well seasonally 
uh, in November and December and finish the year strong. So hopefully by watching this, you can understand what an important role that seasonality plays into uh, the stock market. So there are cycles, there are seasons, and there are months that are better than others. And, and all of it is completely dependent on uh, the sector, the subsector, and the individual investment. As we get draw closer to the kind of the calm before the storm, uh, let me know if you have any questions, and uh, and I look forward to seeing you on the next Markets in Five.